Donald Trump, meantime, today did release the result of his recent physical with his uh, doctor in a way that uh, Donald Trump would. He, he did it on TV with Dr. Oz for uh, Dr. Oz's syndicated hour-long TV show. It was uh, taped at the studio yesterday. It airs today across the country. Uh, and, and Donald Trump discussed his health plan and the re results of his most recent physical. Here he was. You had a colonoscopy uh, performed July 10, 2013, which is normal with no polyps. Calcium score in your heart in 2013 also was low at 98. My goodness, his EKG chest X-ray on April 14th was normal. A normal echocardiogram was done um, two years ago. And uh, your testosterone was 441, which uh, is actually, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> your BMI is high. It's probably close to 30, which is sort of the barrier for okay. most people. Yeah. Do your doctors or your family ever give you a hard time about your weight? Yeah, I think I could lose a little weight. I, I've always been a little bit this way, you know? I've sort of always been that. <laughs> I was probably a good swimmer, but I've always been this way. I think that, uh, yeah, if I had one thing I'd like to lose weight, it's tough uh, because of the way I live. But the one thing I would like to do is be able to drop 15, 20 pounds. It would be good. When you look into the mirror, how old is the person you're looking at? What do you um, see? I would say I see a person that's uh, 35 years old. No, I mean, I feel, I feel the same. I feel the same. I mean, I, you know, Tom Brady's a friend of mine. We play golf together, the great quarterback. He's a phenomenal guy, great athlete. And I'm with him, and I, I feel the same age as him. The campaign also released a note from Trump's doctor who says Donald Trump is in quote unquote excellent physical health. So we have an MD standing by for Vox uh, is with us. He's also a CNN.com opinion contributor to, to go through what he learned from the letter uh, and also from watching Trump on this, uh, this show. Also with me, CNN's senior media correspondent and host of Reliable Sources, Brian Stelter. Uh, but uh, Dr. Vox, uh, let me just begin with you. Just, you know, from your medical perspective, you've looked at the letter from Trump's doctor. What, tell me about it. What stands out for you? Well, he's learned something. Clearly, Dr. Bornstein has reflected on the criticism that he's received to some extent. He has toned down this letter significantly. He's not using those very unusual superlatives that he did in that first letter that made this some, something of a foreign document <laughs> that we saw oh, last man. year. He's listing some actual useful preventative medicine type tests that we would typically get on somebody Trump's age. This is a letter that speaks to me in a little bit more real terms. It is still kind of thin. It's very light on past medical history. I have to imagine that he's had the odd mole checked and so forth. He doesn't really explain why he took Do we need some to know the... about moles checked? I'm just <laughs> I'm just being real. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, if you're going to if you're going to offer in some level of detail like uh, Hillary Clinton's doctor, Dr. Bardak, has done, you might explain some of the past medical history the patient has had. But uh, he got an echocardiogram. Was it you know, purely for preventative reasons? Did he have some symptoms for that? Uh, the resuvastatin that he's taking, is that because he's trying to manage a hypercholesterolemia or is it entirely for prevention? Neither of those are standard recommended preventive medicine techniques. There might be something that Dr. Bornstein uh, thinks is reasonable and I certainly think is within the realm of normal medical practice. Okay, uh, Ford Vox, I'm going to come back to you, but, but Brian Stelter, just on the, the sort of this show yeah. that is Dr. Oz and the show within the show and the, how he reached in and grabbed the, you want to see my medical records? I mean, right. listen, he's a TV guy. He, he wants to get us talking about him and he succeeded. You say it's a good joke, but... I think it's been a very effective joke. Like, like, you know, in some ways, this has been preposterous to be going on Dr. Oz, uh, acting like he's going to the doctor, but it's been very effective because the, the message, the intended message is that Trump has nothing to hide. And by going on daytime TV for an hour talking about his health and by making sure it's been seen by viewers all across the country here on CNN and elsewhere. And a lot of women, which and he And a lot of needs. women, his, his target demo for this message. Yeah. He is, he is accomplishing his goal of saying, I, Donald Trump, have nothing to hide. There's also an implicit message, of course, to Hillary Clinton. Even though he didn't talk about Clinton in detail, there's an implicit message about Clinton in this as well. Uh, let me get to some sound just quickly. This is uh, also from Trump. This is from today. When you're running for president, I think you have an obligation to be healthy. I just don't think you can do the work if you're not healthy. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can represent the country properly if you're not a healthy person. 
Hmm. So just quickly, Stelter, to you, obviously not so veiled dig. You went off prompter a bit right, yesterday that, as well. That's the one moment sort of where Donald Trump takes a veiled shot at Clinton. Yeah. We see her back on the trail today, so maybe the implicit message of her campaign trip today is that she's all well and good as well. But I do think Trump was effective here, even though it came across as a TV stunt. Okay, Ford Vox, uh, Brian Stelter. Thank you both very much. Uh, and we will be seeing Hillary Clinton giving that speech in uh, Greensboro momentarily. Meantime, Donald Trump Jr. Uh, making a joke about gas chambers when talking about the media coverage of his father. Now the Trump campaign is blaming, you guessed it, the media for the backlash of that. We'll, we'll discuss that. And Ivanka Trump uh, cuts off an interview after it gets a little heated. We will talk about the question that got her agitated next. You are watching CNN. I'm Brooke Baldwin. Thanks for being with me. Here she is. Here is the plane uh, officially touched down Greensboro, North Carolina. Hillary Clinton hopping in that car and away she goes. This is significant because, as you know, she has been recouping the last couple of days off the trail from uh, her pneumonia. Uh, no stumble getting on and off that plane there as she is in the battleground state of uh, North Carolina. Uh, we did hear from uh, Secretary Clinton talking to reporters saying she's doing well. Uh, no sign that all the criticism about delayed uh, re the revelation that she was ill was getting to her. In fact, she talked about her, her favorite television shows to the traveling press. Madam Secretary, however, is coming back. So that's something to look forward to. Is that odd to watch that? No, I actually get a big kick out of it. <laughs> I, guess I, I watched it with, play you. yeah, I watched it with you know a little bit of skepticism at first, but I got so into it. All right, joining me now, the Deputy Communications Director of Hillary for America, Christina Shockey. It is nice to see you. Hi, thank you I for having sure me. I am sure it is nice for you to see her <laughs> yes. out and about after yes. the last couple of days. Uh, how is she doing? What is What have the doctors said? Well, first of all, thank you for being here. She is doing great. You know, we released more information from her doctor yesterday who re said she's recovering nicely from this. And as you can see, she's very happy to be back on the trail. If she had her way, she certainly would never have even taken a break. But she took her doctor's advice and took a few days to recover. To uh, part of the news of the day, yes. and Donald Trump, he was out earlier. He was giving a pretty major economic address, and he promised 25 million jobs if elected, 4% economic growth. He dedicated a lot of time to his child care policy, saying families will be able to deduct their state's average cost of child care, and the low income will feel its benefits, which has been a complaint. Here he was. Low-income households will benefit from both an expanded earned income tax credit in the form of child care rebates and a matching $500 contribution for their savings account. A married couple earning $50,000 per year with two children and $8,000 in child care expenses will save 35 percent from their current tax bill. So that is, I wanted to just focus on the child care issue yes. because I know there are a lot of moms watching right now. You, tell me why you think Hillary Clinton's child care policy is better. Well, you know, Hillary put out a child care policy over a year ago before actually Donald Trump even started running for president because this is an issue she has cared about for many, many years. You know, she started her career fighting for children and families. It's what got her into public service. It's one of the main reasons she's running for president. It's one of the passions of her life. And she put out a really comprehensive policy. What we saw with Donald Trump put out yesterday, you know, he has very few plans. He has very few policies that affect working families. And he put out one yesterday on child care that was really half-baked and kind of out of date. You know, analysts who've looked at it have said it primarily benefits wealthy families, which is par for the course. That's what most of Trump's policies that he's actually put out do. And it really wouldn't help many working families. You know, it's basically a tax cut that would primarily help wealthy, wealthy families. Hillary, on the other hand, has a really comprehensive plan. She believes that affordable quality child care is something that we must provide America's working families and she'll work very hard in the Oval Office to finally achieve it. Donald Trump has said he is working for working families and he would help them, though I understand the slight from you. Yes, two, different, two different camps and two different perspectives. <laughs> I want to get to Hillary Clinton yes. and I want to get to the Colin Powell emails yes. because I, was, I know she was on Tom Joyner, the, the radio show, yeah. and, and she was asked uh, about the, the recent hacking into, the, into Colin Powell's emails and she, she sort of unequivocally p pointed her fingers at Russia. Yes. And I'm wondering, does she have evidence? How does she, how does she know that? Well, you know, most experts who've taken a look at this believe that Russian hackers are behind these hacks 
wasn't on the DNC and But this others. particular hack. And, you know, as she has said on this, that she has great respect for General Powell, and she has real sympathy for people whose emails are hacked, so she didn't want to speak to that. But what she really thinks is important here is we're seeing time and again Russian influence on American elections. But does she and know something appears, we don't know? Well, it appears from what we understand from experts that that's who did this and who released this information is really, really troubling. I mean, we've had Republicans and Democrats alike say that these kind of foreign influences, particularly from Russia, are a real concern that they're trying to affect America's elections. She thinks that's really problematic. Donald Trump, of course, has encouraged this kind of hacking, and that's a real problem. The other piece of what's come out in the, in the General Powell's emails is how he has felt about Trump, I think it was uh, international pariah was was how he referred to to him. But but he also said this about Hillary Clinton: "quote Everything Hillary Clinton touches, she kind of screws up with hubris." You know, Care again, to respond? we are just not going to respond about hacked emails. We just don't think that's appropriate. They should not have been released. And she has real sympathy for the fact that his private emails were hacked and released to the public. And we're just not going to comment. How on he that. talked about how he threw a temper tantrum in the Hamptons to try to get the attention of the Clinton folks. No, okay. we're, we're not. Okay. We have real sympathy that this happened to him, and it's really, again, not right that what appears to be Russian hackers are attempting to influence an American okay. election. Let's talk about the polls, um, which I know we yes. like to do. Yes. Uh, a string of national and battleground polls consistently show this tighter race. Uh, latest one from Ohio found Trump leading uh, Hillary Clinton by three points uh, among likely voters and and. I know, you know, we've talked before, and, and when it's looking good, you, you, you tell the polls. And so how do you explain how they are so close? You know, Brooke, actually, we don't really tell the polls. Others do. But we have believed from day one, Hillary has believed this is going to be an incredibly close election, is that the last uh, modern American elections are very close. Even before we know the candidates, they're usually pretty divided. So she has prepared from day one for this to be incredibly close. And she's put out of the organization. How is it so close? Because when you listen to her, as we do, and yeah. she calls him xenophobic and, and racist and points to his dark policies and the alt-right speech she gave, you know, if, if you take Hillary Clinton's words and how it speaks about his character, shouldn't she be mowing him over in the polls? Well, you know what? We're a divided country, and she knew that going into this, and has been saying from the beginning this is going to be really close. A lot of people didn't hear that when we said that, but we've built an organization to prepare for that. She is really proud. We've got 300 Hillary for America offices in our battleground states. We've got 50 between Ohio and Florida alone. We have hundreds of thousands of volunteers out there registering our voters. We're preparing for a very tight election, but we really need our supporters to get out there. We need to get our people registered. we got to get our people to the polls because this is going to be tight and we're taking it seriously. She's never taken this for granted. The debate 12 days away. Christina Shockey, I'm sure she's been prepping as she has been recouping. Yes. Uh, we will see everyone at Hofstra. Thank you so much. Thank Christina you. Shockey here from uh, the Hillary Clinton uh, camp.